Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the Game Feed. And after a long day of press conferences from EA and Bethesda and all the crazy leaks we've been getting, I figured it's only appropriate for me to go ahead and talk about what I thought about both of these conferences in kind of a good detail, but I'm not going to keep this extremely long. But let's go ahead and start out with the first uh, conference of the day, and that was EA, and their, their EA event was called EA Play. Now, to start out the whole show, they showed off Titanfall 2. Of course, that's coming out on PlayStation 4, Xbox One, and PC. And not only is this a good thing because it's going to give more players an opportunity to play Titanfall as a whole, but they're bringing in single player, which that made me really, really excited. But <laughs> Zach, uh, well, Vince Zappella, I always call him Zach. I don't know why. He came out on the stage and he was kind of he kind of made fun of it because uh, earlier today there was a leak that you know well there's a single player content which we kind of figured that was going to happen a long time ago but he kind of joked about it but um it definitely looked great um, you know it's great that it's coming out multiple platforms because more people could play the game and that means if more people buy the game there can be another sequel. Um, the multiplayer looked great as usual, uh, but the cool thing about the story was the fact that the um, the Titan seemed like it has its own personality, and I think that's going to be really, really cool just to play the game with Titans with the personalities and just have a single-player uh, component to it, because I think that's what Titanfall uh, really, really, really needed. Now... Uh, EA, of course, continued with Madden, FIFA, and they talked about uh, this, this EA. Um, it's, it's an EA initiative to uh, bring in more players to have competitions. Um, and this is for all their big games. They're, they're wanting to go into esports in a big way, but also make it to where anybody can play and compete on levels, whatever your um, skill play is. Now, that's pretty cool. I do like that. Um, and it gives everybody an opportunity to kind of go out and do things themselves and try to see if they can be the best at what they can be. Um, you know, I'm not too much on sports games, and of course, the Madden of the FIFA thing was is okay. I mean, like I said, I'm not big in sports, so that, that's the part I didn't care about, but they did spend a lot of time on that. Um, they did let people know that, you know, these games are going to be running on Frostbite. Um, now, I'm not sure about Madden. I think it is, but I do know for sure that FIFA, the new FIFA 17 will be. It's also going to have some kind of story component, which I don't know how that's going to work, but it was pretty cool. Um, now, how EA Play worked was you had the main stage in Los Angeles, then you had uh, another stage in Europe um, with um, Peter Moore, which is it's always cool to see P Peter Moore up there. Um, you know, I've followed him since you know he's been in, with Xbox, so I like Peter Moore for the most part. Um, then we continued on with Mass Effect Andromeda. We didn't really get to see much gameplay. It was more of a behind-the-scenes thing, which. You know, it looks great. Um, I, I kind of wish they would have had at least something more because this game's been in works for a while, and it just seems like they're just giving us tiny, tiny little morsels. But they said, you know, there'll be more shown this fall, but that's cool too. Um, the fact that you're going to be going to the Andromeda Galaxy and they're promising a whole new, more open experience allowing you to do, you know, explore more planets and all this other stuff. That's cool. I like Mass Effect. Uh, the first three Mass Effect games are my favorite games of last generation, uh, despite what a lot of people said about the third one's ending, which was meh, meh, meh. I liked it. I'm fine with it. But, you know, they fixed that problem. Uh, then we moved into another EA thing, which was kind of cool. Um, it's it's basically called EA Originals, and last year we got a taste of it with Unravel, and it's kind of the same thing. Uh, what they're going to do, they're going to go and fund uh, independent studios. They're going to find games that uh, they think will be good for EA, 
and try to give these developers funding. And the cool thing they said is that 100% of the money these games make go back to the developer. That way they can, they can continue uh, making more games, new IPs. Uh, the game they shown off this year was something called Faye, which is really, really interesting. Um, again, we had another um, game developer got, got on stage, and you could tell he was really, really nervous, which that's cool. That's kind of how it was last year with Unravel. Um, but it gives a chance for these small studios to get up on stage on something they probably normally would never get a chance to do and show off something they love. But uh, Faye was really interesting. It's this adventure game um, where you're like this little cub, like a little bear cub, but the art is really interesting. Um, it kind of reminded me of like a really dark... Um, if I had to explain it, um, the dark world of Twilight Princess mixed with a little bit of cell shading um, and that's kind of what it was like. Uh, there's no um, actual voices or anything like that and how it works is you communicate to other organisms in the game, animals, plants, and every single organism and plant has an animal has different songs. When you learn these songs you kind of connect and you can use these uh, animals and use their abilities. Um, the gameplay they've shown uh, also shown these bad guys. I forget what they call them. Um, but it looked really interesting. I, I'm cool with Faye. Um, I still have yet to got to play Unravel, which I hope to play that soon. Um, but yeah, uh, Faye was really interesting, and the EA Originals was actually pretty cool. It's something different. Um, you know, it's not, it seems like a totally different EA. Uh, see what else we moved to. Uh, we moved over to Star Wars. Now Star Wars, um, we got Jade Raymond. She came up on stage and she talked about the Star Wars games that are coming out. And another one of these, um, you know, just a tease of what's coming. You didn't really get to see gameplay in these games. Um, you know, she thought went ahead and talked about the expansion coming out for Battlefield Battlefront uh, One, the best been. Uh, map pack, as well as she went ahead and acknowledged, well, they acknowledged that there will be a Battlefront 2, and they're going to offer what players want, so half that means a, you know, more game, more maps, um, and also space battles and single player content would be nice. Um, they talked about Visceral's game, uh, which was, they didn't really show much. They showed a brief segment where um, it looks like it takes place prior to, um, uh, shoot, uh, the newest Star Wars movie, and, um, you got to see, like, the, it looks like, like, the characters coming out, and you see the New Order flags, and some TIE fighters flying overhead, um, and I guess Respawn, they're working on a Star Wars game as well, but like I said, you didn't really get to see the gameplay, it's more of like, oh, we got this coming, we're working on these things, we're excited we're working on these things, but, we're not ready to show them to you yet, but it's cool. It's nice to know that there are Star Wars games coming out, and there are going to be games that are going to be very, very different, so I'm excited about that. Um, the biggest showcase of the whole show, and I may have missed something, but those are the most memorable parts, but the biggest showcase, of course, was Battlefield 1. Uh, we got to see a, a cinematic trailer, and they got to talk about how the game's going to have dyma dynamic weather systems, uh, more destruction, as well as a few other things, the vehicles you'll be using. Um, <laughs> it had a really awkward thing where they cut over to Zac Efron and Jamie Foxx. Um, it was really awkward how they introduced themselves. You could tell they kind of didn't want to be there in the first place, but um, it was part of these teams. Uh, that's going to be the 64 players. Um one hour stream that was going to show off multiplayer gameplay. Um, they didn't really show too much gameplay in that, aside of what was in the trailer. Um, but you can watch the stream, which I watched some of it earlier today, which the game, it does look fantastic, by the way. I, I do really like it. Um, I think EA is, I think, really, really pushing it a little bit. They're going out there and like, you know what, let's get away from this modern warfare stuff and let's try something different. Um, so it's good to see DICE is back. Again, uh, we have <laughs> a World War One setting. Everything looks really, really interesting. Um, 
And that's something I'm personally excited for because, you know, I'm tired of modern modern shooters as well as, you know, the spy, space combat. And that's why, you know, a lot of people's kind of sick of Call of Duty because it's kind of aiming that way. And there's already plenty of games that's in that space. I mean, Titanfall 2, that's your futuristic shooter. That's what's, you know, that's what EA has. They don't need another one. Um, the, my only gripe is the fact that I think them releasing Titanfall 2 that close in between Battlefield 1 and Call of Duty Infinite Warfare, I think it's going to hurt that game in terms of sales. And yeah, I know it's going to be on multi-platform, but I kind of wish they would push this game out a bit because you know, you're know you going to have three really, really big uh, multiplayer shooters. Then you're going to have whatever Microsoft pulls out and Sony. Um, Gears of War 4 will be out as, you know, whatever else. Um, but that's about what um, was the good stuff with the EA Play. It wasn't really exciting. Um, the games they shown were okay. I mean, well, especially, you know, the main things they shown was just Titanfall 2, Battlefield 1, and a little bit of Fae. You didn't really get to see too much. They spent too much time with the sports stuff, but they always tend to do that. Um, they didn't spend too much time on mobile. They didn't mention mobile. But overall, it was okay. If I had to rate it, I'd probably give it at least a B- minus because, you know, it was good. It got to the point. Um, the sports stuff was meh, but at least it wasn't like last year's. Okay, so let's go ahead and move over to Bethesda. Um, they had their showcase today. Um, it was after the EEA Play event. Uh, immediately, as I predicted... Um, which I was pretty excited, but kind of let down by this, is um, immediately opening this press conference, they had Quake. It's called Quake Champions, and it's going to be a multiplayer arena shooter, which, you know, Quake, to be fair, Quake is mainly well-known for its multiplayer. Given, this, given the fact that Quake uh, Live is still available, Quake 3 Arena was so huge, um, my only gripe is I kind of wish there was a Quake single-player component. Um, they said they're going to show more stuff at QuakeCon, but they did not mention any type of single-player content. Um, it's going to be running on Id Tech, Id Tech 6, and, you know, I'm sure it's really exciting. I'll definitely play it for sure. Um, they said it's going to be on PC only so far. They didn't mention any other consoles aside from uh, PC. Uh, the next thing they moved over to, um, we talked. they talked a little bit about... Um, <coughs> The Elder Scrolls, uh, it's called Elder Scrolls Legends. It's basically their, their answer to Hearthstone, Magic the Gathering, and Gwent. Uh, it's their own card battle game, which looks pretty interesting. I mean, if you play played any of those games, you might like that. They have a chance where you can get into the beta, which I'm going to try my best to get into it and show you guys the gameplay. Um, but it kind of looked like Hearthstone, looked like Gwent, looked like Magic. Um, so hopefully they have something a little bit different to... Uh, make them look a whole lot better for that. Um, <clears throat> make them a little bit better in the competition, maybe separate it a little bit. Uh, the next thing we moved on to was Arcane. Arcane Studios came out. You know, I thought they was going to go ahead and immediately talk about um, <clears throat> Dishonored 2, which uh, they didn't. Um, they came out with a new trailer, which the game was actually, I couldn't tell what it was at the beginning. And it looks vastly different than what I expected when they announced it. Um, that being said, um, the game they announced was Prey, um, which is supposed to be a, you wake up on this space station or something like that uh, in, you know, in the future, and there's aliens on board and yada, 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 yada. Um, it didn't look nearly as interesting as Prey 2 did back, you know, six years ago or seven years ago when it was announced. Um, I kind of wish they would have kept that. I really, as a fan of the first Prey game, um, I kind of wish they would have kept going that route. Um, but we didn't see any gameplay, really. Uh, it was all a cinematic. Um, but it looked interesting. Um, and Arcane, they do a pretty good job. They did a good job with... Um, Dishonored, and so I'm pretty sure they'll do great with this. And they didn't give it like a subtitle, just called Praise, so it might be kind of confusing. Um, 
but you know it might just be the reboot of Prey and Bethesda does have that property now so I mean um, that's good uh, so we got Prey back in the spotlight um, then we move over to Fallout 4 we talked to, talked a little bit about they had Todd Howard uh, in a video that he came out um, talking about some DLC it's coming uh, something called Fallout Contraptions which adds a lot more stuff to the workshop. Um, <clears throat> there was a couple other ones, but the other, the big one was a big expansion, which they didn't say too much about, uh, was Nuka World, which I guess that's basically where the Fallout's version of Disneyland, but the Nuka Cola branded Disneyland. Um, now I we didn't get too much about it, um, but it is an expansion. I'm assuming it is a uh, standalone single player expansion but has nothing to do with the uh, mechanics like building and stuff but also they announced where you can create your own vault uh, within the Fallout universe now uh, I don't think these are a part of the season pass if you have that so I think it's going to be completely different um, but yeah it's look, it looks great more Fallout 4 more Fallout's good and one of the biggest things which a lot of other people have been talking about for a while now is um, which wasn't really a surprise was Todd Howard said you know there's a lot of people who's been asking me about this and yes we're making it um, so it came out on the screen you automatically saw Skyrim um, and it was the enhanced versions with newer graphics um, with all the contents now these are going to be coming out on Xbox One PlayStation 4 and PC so I'm assuming it's going to have all the expansions with just all new effects. It'll look pretty. I'm cool with that. That might be enough for me to go ahead and purchase it again. Uh, you will be able to play mods on that on consoles as well. So Skyrim. Skyrim's good. I love Skyrim. I put too many hours into Skyrim and Fallouts, and it's embarrassing, and I don't want to talk about it because it's a lot. <laughs> and it's the same thing with Oblivion. Uh, then we moved on to a little bit of, not just a little bit, it was actually a lot. I think they uh, talked about this way more than they should have, which was The Elder Scrolls Online. Um, we had the guy come out, we talked about, they well, they talked about it. I, I say we as if I was there on stage with these people. <laughs> but anyways, um, they came out on stage and just talking about, you know, the successful stuff they're doing with... Um, the game, the Dark Brotherhood expansion was supposed to come out, I think, tomorrow? Um, so that's cool. Uh, you know, I bought the Tamriel Edition on Xbox One when it came out. And I put about 20 hours in it. And, you know, I haven't played it since. And this was back during when it first released. And I may go back to the game because he said there was a lot of changes they fixed on it. They may have to pick up the expansions as well. As this new thing coming out was called, um, I think it's called... Uh, Tamriel, Tamriel Unlimited, not Tamriel Unlimited, maybe that's what it is, Cyrodiil, something, but it takes away the level cap, and as soon as you start the game after a tutorial, you can explore whatever you want. It kind of sounds to me like, you know, Elder, Sc Elder Scrolls with online without the online and feeling more like Elder Scrolls, Sky like Skyrim or something. That sounds intriguing. He didn't give too much information aside from it coming out this fall. Um, so that's cool. That's cool, too. Um, and he said, you know, there's been a whole lot of updates for that game, and he's fi they fixed a whole lot of stuff for it. Uh, so, yeah, I may go back to uh, Elder Scrolls Online. Definitely, definitely intrigued by that. Um, now, the last thing they moved over to, which I spent a lot of time on this, um, and I was kind of surprised, um, and that was Dishonored 2. Uh, we got to see the first gameplay footage, as well as the gameplay trailer. Uh, the first part they shown was just, like, environments, which absolutely looks stunning. They're using something called the Void Engine, which was an engine they created just specifically for, um, this game, which looks nice. The game looks fantastic, and you can play as two different characters. You can play as Corvo, or you can play as uh, the daughter of the girl that gets assassinated. Well, as Corvo's love interest and the queen. I forgot her name already, but you get to play her daughter, and it's Corvo's uh, daughter. So, you get to see that. You get to play as both of those, and they both have unique abilities for you to go through the game. Um... <coughs> 
but it looked great. It really did. Uh, the gameplay looked exactly. I mean, if you like Dishonored and you enjoyed it, you'd know what you're getting into. Some of the abilities are really cool. Um, one was called Shadow. I think it was called Shadow Walk. And you basically turn into this shadow thing. And it reminded me of the darkness. Um, because you turn into the shadow thing, you sneak up on an enemy, you grab them, and it looked like she ripped them apart. Uh, the other thing was called Domino, which is really cool. Um, so basically what happens, you know, she sets up this trap, sets a mine, and she uses Domino ability, where she selects three different characters. Well, she sets off the trap, basically turning off his projector, and she puts a mine by it. So once she turned off the projector and got onto a balcony, they, one of the characters walked up to it, and you know they're all these three characters are linked. So <clears throat> whenever that character got shocked by the mine, the other characters on the other side of the room, since they had domino effect on them, they all got the same treatment, which was really really cool. I liked it. Um, you know, it looks the game looks great. I'm excited for that. Um, you could tell that the guy, the uh, lead uh, designer on it, was pretty pretty nervous the whole time on it. Um, but that's kind of what concluded with Bethesda. Now, <clears throat> out of both of the events, I'll go ahead and tell you. First, EA, the things I wish they would have done was kind of gave, you know, Spent less time talking about the sports games. Maybe gave more gameplay footage of Battlefield 1. Um, talked a little bit about Mirror's Edge because that game just came out. They didn't really say too much at all about it. They didn't mention it. Um, maybe other games they might have announced. Um, there was no need for speed, which, you know, that's fine. Um, no PGA or NBA stuff. So that's cool, too. Um, but... You know, I can't really think what else EA could have added to make it a little bit better. Uh, maybe talked a little bit more about EA Access or maybe some backwards compatibility titles, legacy games like Battlefield, Bad Company 1 or 2 coming out for these games uh, for the systems. Um, nothing like that. But Bethesda, the things I wish they would have shown... Um, we didn't even hear anything about. Um, and at the end, you got to see all the studios, like, on screen, and, you know, they're all waving. This is after they talked a little bit about their VR, which, oh, yeah, that's that's actually kind of cool now we're talking about it. Uh, they did talk about Doom, and they're going to be having new Snap Map um, content up, updates coming out for that, and they're all free. Um, but they, had, it, they introduced Bethesda VR, and uh, the two games that's going to support it, which was available to play at the event, was Doom and Fallout 4, which they said that these games will be also releasing on the HTC Vive platform. Now, I don't know if that's going to also come out on the Oculus Rift, but or if it's going to be Vive exclusive, which that happens. That seems to be happening right now um, as we speak, because um, they're considering both of these as separate platforms and, you know, I don't know, but um, the thing that I wish they would have talked about or maybe said anything about was possibly maybe a new Wolfenstein, um, New Order 2 or something, because um, I, you know, I really liked the first Wolf, well, New Order and Old Blood, uh, so we didn't see anything about that, and we didn't hear anything about Tango Studios, the guys behind The Evil Within. Uh, which makes me think that uh, maybe there won't be an Evil Within 2. I hope there is, because I really, really like that game. It was actually really good. Um, and it was I think it was Shinji Yufune, so the the creator on this game. He worked on all the I think all the prior Resident Evils up to four. But um, oh, man, I kind of wish they would have done that. Um, now Bethesda. I, again, I'd have to give them at least a B. Um, they get, they came in, they gave some things that we wanted to see. Um, you know, Quake was there. And, you know, I, I've been wanting another Quake. You know, we talked about that on the E3 predictions a while back. Um, but I don't know. I, I don't know. I, 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 so far, these two conferences 
those are okay. EA was definitely the weakest one. Um, but, you know, nothing, they didn't do anything completely surprising or something to blow us away. Uh, like the Fallout 4 announcement last year. Um, but I don't know. It's, um, that they may be some things down the road. QuakeCon, they mentioned you'll probably see gameplay for some other stuff. Uh, we still have Gamescom coming up. But that leads me to the next thing. Uh, tomorrow we have Microsoft and I believe Sony, and I'm not sure if Ubisoft is in that round two. So what we'll do is I want to watch all three of those, um, and I'll do a video for both Microsoft and Sony. It'll be one video, about 20, 30 minutes long. Then we'll do a Ubisoft and the rest, and we'll make that maybe 20, 30 minutes long. It'll be a review. And later on that week, we'll take a look at my actual um, <coughs> speculations. We'll compare it, see what I got right, what I got wrong, and go from there. But guys, thank you guys so much for checking us out. Uh, be sure to check out my video I posted earlier today. It's called, well, actually it's last night, depending what time you watch this. Um, it's called What Have We Become, and it's in regards to a lot of things that's been going on in the world lately, especially this weekend. Um, it's not a huge political thing. It's just, you know, something I had to get off my mind. But also, be sure to hit like and subscribe. I definitely will appreciate it. Um, it helps the channel grow, helps me do things. And if there's some things you want me to improve on, you know, give me some critical, um, just let me have it. Just tell me what I need to be doing right, what I'm doing wrong, uh, what you want to see, and I definitely, I'd like to take, you know, fix the things. That way I can make a better channel for you guys, more content as well. Now next week, I'll be most likely starting on Sunday of next week. Uh, I'll be taking a about a week off of making any video content, just due to the fact that I have my brother coming up. Um, for <clears throat> uh, his vacation, so I'm going to spend spending a lot of time with them. So, and I'll I'll do a video right before that, just kind of explain things what's going on. That way, you guys kind of know. But again, hit like and subscribe. I love you, and I'll see you guys tomorrow. Most likely tomorrow, this the next video will come out on Tuesday, but we'll definitely have some stuff to talk about with Sony, Microsoft, and Ubisoft, or whatever else comes out in E3. Uh, this whole week is dedicated to E3 and gaming coverage, so stay tuned, and I love you guys.